Hey guys, Joshua Peterson, Peterson Electric. It is almost July 2019. Uh, for my SEO guide, this is going to be about kitchen and bath remodels, assuming about arc fault and GFCI protection to help you out. Um, basically, there is a difference in our NEC code book is we're right now in the 2017. It is going to become 2020 in six months. We'll start adopting that by next year this time. And then the new codes implement. So every three years we get a new code book and every four years we get possibly a new president. So just keep that in mind. In a nutshell, um, oh, also the IR, IRC code, which is going to be a residential, but a building code, that is going to be basically updated every four years, I believe. But they're always a year behind us. That's what I remember. So it might be every three years. Um, so anyways, I'm an electrician, so I'm just describing to you what to expect. And to talk about arc fault and GFCI protection, it came out in 2002 for arc fault protection. Uh, it was studied in 99 and they finally implemented it in bedrooms. Once that came out, they decided, hey, is this a safer bet? Because of the fact that we have a lot of fires and they decided, you know, they log it. So when you have an insurance claim, your adjuster, it goes to the state. Was there loss of life? Was it electrocution? Was it a fire? Was it damaging? Was it a smokehouse? Or is it just completely burnt to the ground? A lot of the things they want to find out with arson, you know, was it somebody who did that or was it truly really electrical related? Blame the electrician, right? Here's the point of the matter. Uh, there was a lot of breakers built in the past in the 50s, 60s, and 70s that did not trip well. A breaker's job is designed to trip based on a fault, which might be to ground, or a dead short, phase to phase, or a, typically an overcurrent draw. So these things that it's supposed to detect is kind of a thermal situation when it grounds out, or it shorts, or it has too much current running on it. A good way to describe it is, look, you're driving down I-25 in Colorado, right, from 30 years ago, way different. Too many cars on the tarmac, sitting in one location, heating up that tar. It's not flowing, right? We're grid locked. Well, we would call that electron locked. Electron flow, small wire, too much electron pole. Bottom line, it's just not adequate to get to be used. So basically our breaker has to limit the amount of current flow, not the voltage, but the current flow backwards on the wire. This is why your neutral can melt. You enlarge the circumference size of your wire, eh, electron flow is better. Therefore you can enlarge the breaker. A lot of people call me, Josh, I got a 15 amp breaker, keeps tripping. I know it's based on not using too much. Can I just upsize the breaker? You can do whatever you want in your panel. But eventually, by science, you're going to burn down that, well, you're going to burn up that circuit and possibly burn down your home. Keeping in mind what you can't see in the walls, what can hurt you. A lot of it can be junctions that start to melt first. So arc faulting came out 2002. They adopted it in 2002 to 2005 and through eight, and they decided, wow, this is working. I kind of think it was a little bit manufacturer driven in the beginning because they, hey, if you can't fit an arc foot, you gotta change your panel, right? Because you remodeled a bedroom. Well, they started adopting newer codes and said, okay, look, if you're gonna modify the circuit, extend the circuit, you need to arc fault. Well, then in 2011, they added a couple more rooms, and then in 14, they added some more, and 17, finally, We've got basically everywhere in the house, just about on your 120 volt circuits. But when they hit about 2011, they added kitchens on there. Now bathrooms, interesting enough, they still don't have that on there for an arc fault, unless the circuit goes around and there's not a door that shuts and it's an open concept to the master bedroom or an overflow bathroom. So then yes, you got to arc fault those lights. But basically the arc faulting came about to protect people from loss of life and also fires. Uh, older breaker panels did not do well, so they have to be changed out. So yeah, you could have a kitchen remodel like this one and have to change out or add a panel. In this video, you didn't see my other videos. I haven't worn the same shirt. Hopefully you'll see a couple other ones. They're longer than this, but this we had to extend and add a panel outside because that was a good panel. It's a square DQO. It just doesn't have enough space. So think of it like, you know, you don't have enough trunk space in your car. It's adequate in article 230.79 that it has hundred amps to the home, it's just, can I tap a sub panel? Sure, you can tap and step down 60 amps. So there I did. <laughs> this guy right here had to have all these, all these arc faults added for just this kitchen because they were tripping with an overload and also dead shorts going on or, or ground faulting in there because of the wires melting in the boxes. This is a surge protection device and we have all of our 
arc fault, baby blue is dual function, AFCI is dark blue. In a nutshell, there are certain circuits that you have to arc fault and some that you have to dual function. Let's get into Article 210.8, the sister uh, chapter to that. Um, so that article talks about GFCI protection. GFCI protection stands for ground fault circuit interrupting. So the circuit will interrupt if there's a ground fault, usually from the source of water that could get between the hot and the ungrounded conductor, or the ungrounded conductor and the neutral, excuse me. So if water gets detected, that's why it can trip. And a lot of us are running around looking in our garage for a little reset button, right? But here's the fact of the matter. Uh, the code does state that the certain outlets have to be protected and certain circuits but it doesn't state that every part of the circuit has to be protected. So that's why you can have a master and a slave, or what we call line and load, and upstream and downstream. So you could have a device in the panel that just has a reset button on the, on the breaker, and you're good to go. In this situation in 2019, I did this whole garage. I didn't want to put GFIs everywhere. I would ended up with four of them in this place. And for today's code, you have to GFCI your garage door opener. But you can't get to it, and you're not allowed to put it up there to reset, so Mrs. Jones doesn't climb up there at 90 years old trying to reset a button. She can't get in her house. So you have to have an adequate location. So we put it on the breaker, and all the circuit is basically protected by the GFCI. Personally, I put in a dual function because they're cheaper than buying a GFCI. And it gives you arc fault protection. Why wouldn't you arc fault the garage? Where do you see extension cords? Everywhere in the garage. Exactly. So that's why we dual function that. The panel was able to accept that breaker. A lot of the times in Colorado, realtors call up and they talk about this. I should do a separate video on this. Should I GFCI just two outlets in the kitchen? A lot of that's a negotiation term, but that has nothing to do with us redoing the kitchen and starting from scratch with new wires. We have to GFCI protect pretty much every circuit that's 120 volt rated in here. Dishwasher disposal, yeah, in 2014, they said, let's put it on 2017, they took it back off. But then they threw in a little addendum to the code and said anything within six foot to the sink. How do you know it's six foot to the sink? There's six foot to the sink. If your microwave opens, six foot. The fridge opens, six foot. The dishwasher opens, six foot. Disposal, six foot. It's where metal, water, and electricity meet. They're protecting you from an electrocution. So if you have an older home with no grounds and you're already doing your kitchen and bathroom, but you're not updating it, that doesn't make sense to me. What does it mean to have a ground wire? Well, an EGC grounded conductor inside of the NM cable, non-metallic, Romex is what you guys call it, which is a slang term, by the way, you'll never find that in the code book, Romex. This NM cable right here has its ground. You may have your ungrounded conductor hot or your grounded conductor ED neutral but you may not have your grounding conductor, your bare copper, okay? It might be green if you have TH wire pulled. When I pulled through this right here, outside I'll show you, this is a green wire. It's a conductor, it's insulated, it's not non-insulated, it doesn't say I have to have it insulated, it's non-insulated and insulated, it's, it's just one, six, one half dozen the other, okay? So in this, we had to set a new panel. Well, anytime I put arc faults in GFCIs, they're electronic breakers, I'm putting a surge protector. I'm protecting the investment I put in because I have a warranty for six months. It makes really good sense. Bottom line, this protects the whole entire house. Video is not about surge protection in Article 285, but it is about protecting the equipment, right? So you're doing a kitchen remodel. Well, I don't have space for the surge in all these breakers. Exactly, now you have to set a sub panel or redo your service. Well, can I just redo just the service outside? Not in this situation. I'll do another video on that here in just a minute, and it'll be about how to anticipate, can I just change out my panel? Thanks, guys.